Hi everyone. Have you had a pap test? Do you know what is a pap test? Well, it is one of the most important areas of prevention that a woman can do to safeguard her health. I am Dr. Neha Gupta. I welcome you to Feminine once again and today I am going to talk to you about the pap test. So, what is a pap test? A pap test or a pap smear as it is commonly called is a test to screen for the cancer of the cervix. Now, what is cervix? Cervix is the lowermost portion of the uterus or the mouth of the uterus. Ya jisko common language mein bache dani ka mu bhi kaha jata hai. So, the cancer which develops in this portion is known as the cancer of the cervix or the cervical cancer. And pap smear is a test to screen for cervical cancer. So, what do I mean by screening? Screening test is a test which has to be applied to the healthy population, which means everyone, all healthy individuals, all healthy women should undergo the pap smear test for early detection of the cervical cancer. So who needs a pap test? Well, all women between the ages of 25 to 65 years should undergo the pap test. All women, once they become sexually active beyond the age of 25 years, they should undergo the pap test up till the age of 65 years. That is what the guideline is and that is what should be followed. So how often should the pap test be done? The pap smear has to be done every three years between the ages of 25 to 65 years. And once we combine the pap test with the testing of the HPV virus, then the screening interval can be increased to every five years. We generally advise testing for HPV only beyond the age of 30 years. So, it is broadly speaking every three years between 25 to 65 years of age and for women who are more than 30 years of age when we do a co-testing that is we are testing for the pap as well as the hpv virus then the screening interval can be increased to every five years so what can you expect during a pap test what happens during the test well, it is actually an OPD procedure. You will have to visit your gynecologist to get the sample collected. And the test involves doing a gynecological examination. So if you've had any gynae exams earlier, you would know what it means. You would generally be asked to empty your bladder. That is, you would be asked to pass urine and then you would be asked to lie down on the examination couch in a comfortable position. Once you've done that, then there's an instrument which we call as a cuscose speculum. With the help of that instrument, we introduce the instrument in the vagina and once we open the blades of the instrument, the walls of the vagina, they get separated. Now once that happens, we get a view of the cervix. We are able to see the cervix by doing this. Then to collect the sample, we have a device which is uh, basically like a wooden spatula and there's a brush along with it. So we move the brush and the spatula over the cervix and by doing that, we collect the cells from the cervix onto the spatula. Once we've done that, then we put the spatula in a container which contains a liquid solution. Then we close the container, we label the container correctly and the specimen is sent to the laboratory. In the laboratory, the pathologist would then make slides out of this sample and study those slides under a microscope. And after studying the slide, he gives the, his, his final opinion about your pap smear. So the result takes about two to three days to come and once the result is there, you must go back to your gynecologist to discuss the result. 
Now, what do the results of the pap smear mean? So, I explained in the previous verse that the uh, pathologist will give the final opinion on what the pap smear result is. Now, to understand these results, we need to understand a little bit about how the cancer of the cervix develops. Most, in most of the cases, this cancer develops due to a viral infection, which is the HPV infection or the human papilloma virus. Now, this virus is a sexually transmitted infection and that is why the pap smear needs to be done for all sexually active women. Now, if you've had any sexual exposure, there are high chances that you would have the HPV virus in your body. But the body also has a defense mechanism. It fights against this virus and it clears out the virus. But in some women, the virus may not get cleared and it may just stay in the body. It is this persisting HPV viral infection which will lead to the cancer of the cervix. But then this cancer does not develop overnight. It develops over a period of 10 to 15 years passing through the stages of mild abnormalities, moderate abnormalities, severe abnormalities and then finally the frank invasive cancer will develop. So by doing a pap test, we are actually using this window of opportunity that we get. We get this time period of 10 to 15 years and in this time period by doing the test you know regularly cyclically every three years we are making an attempt to pick up these abnormalities at a very early stage when they are only mild or moderate in nature and so you know at this stage if the disease is picked up it is completely curable with minimum intervention and prevention is definitely always it is always better than cure so uh, you know Again, coming back to our you know, primary question, what do the results of the pap test mean for you? So the result could come out just as inflammation, which means that there is just, you know, there are changes of infection which are present, but there are no serious changes. Or the result could come out as, you know, some precancerous changes are there, but they are only mild changes. So these changes would mostly be reported as uh, uh, you know low grade changes then the result could also come out as high grade changes which means that the abnormality is of a significant nature and it can go on to become a cancer of the cervix and lastly of course there can be a result which says that there is the presence of cancer of the cervix so that is why it is extremely important to follow up the result of your pap test do go back to your gynecologist to discuss your results. Now, does a pap test test for HPV also? So the answer is no. When we are doing a pap test, we are not routinely testing for the HPV virus that I have talked about earlier, the human papilloma virus. But yes, if somebody says that they want to get tested for the HPV virus, then we can the, the same sample that we took for the pap test the same sample can also be tested for the hpv virus but we have to send you know we have to send a separate request to test for the hpv uh, similarly once the pap test result comes out and the result is showing uh, some you know abnormalities it is showing uh, precancerous changes then again we may need or we may want to test for the hpv virus and so we will take the sample again the procedure of taking the sample for the hpv virus is exactly similar as taking a sample for the pap test but yes routinely when we are doing the pap test we are not testing every sample for the HPV virus also. There are special circumstances where we test for HPV and we have to send a separate test or we have to send a separate requisition for that.